Hello, I am glad you could come pray with me on this beautiful, beautiful day. Who would think we would have such gorgeous weather in August? <laughs> but we are truly being blessed with beautiful weather just now. Uh, today, as in all days, we seek to learn about prayer, to deepen our prayer lives and take time to pray together. And I am glad you have joined this session. Thanks for being here. Uh, today, we are on the 17th chapter of Richard Foster's book, Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. And with number 17, we arrive at intercessory prayer, uh, one that most of us are familiar with. Last week, we looked at petitionary prayer, which is when we ask for things for ourselves. And intercessory prayer is when we actually ask God for things for other people. So it is our time to reach out to the Lord for others. And of course, this section is about reaching out in ministry, so it makes perfect sense that uh, this uh, intercessory prayer is here. But I do want to remind us um, of something that's said on the back of the cover of his book. Richard Foster does not tell us how to acquire things through prayer. He tells us how God will help us discover God. Through prayer and in getting to know God become more like God and so ultimately that is what all of this is about it's about deepening our relationship with God and so when we lift others up out of love and concern we are connecting with God as well so here is what Foster has to say about intercessory prayer if we truly love people, we will desire for them far more than it is within our power to give them. And this will lead us to prayer. Intercession is a way of loving others. When we move from petition to intercession, we are shifting our center of gravity from our own needs to the needs and concerns of others. Intercessory prayer is selfless prayer, even self-giving prayer. In the ongoing work of the kingdom of God, nothing is more important than intercessory prayer. People today desperately need the help that we can give them, and we can make a difference if we learn to pray on their behalf. This is not optional. It is a sacred obligation and a precious privilege of all who take up the yoke of Christ. And so it is amazing that we, um, simple human beings, can come before the creator of the universe and not ask only for things for ourselves, who we know ourselves pretty well, but to have the audacity <laughs> to ask for things for other people, um, to think that we know what they might need or know how a God can work in their lives. And so how is it that we have this honor and obligation? Uh, well, it is because of Christ. <laughs> Um, we are reminded in uh, Romans 8.34, as Paul assures us, Christ Jesus, who died, yes, who was raised, who is the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. And as if to intensify the truth of this, the writer of Hebrews declares Jesus an eternal priest after the order of Melchizedek, who always lives to make intercession. So Christ um, intercedes for us, and so we are able to intercede for others, much as we love because we were first loved. Now we can intercede because Christ intercedes for us. Foster goes on to say uh, that uh, when in John's Gospel, when Jesus was gathered there with his disciples, uh, he explained to his mystified band that he is in the Father and the Father is in him that he is going to the Father, and that they will be enabled to do greater works because he is going to the Father. <clears throat> and so what is it about Jesus, Foster says, a going to the Father so that, that so radically changes the equation? Why would that make such a difference in their and our prayer experience? The new dimension is this. Jesus is entering his eternal work as intercessor before the throne of God. And as a result, we are enabled to pray for others with an entirely new authority. We pray by faith alone. Jesus Christ, our eternal intercessor, is responsible for our prayer life. 
We need an interpreter, an intermediary, a go-between. This is what Christ Jesus does for us is his role of eternal intercessor. He straightens out and cleanses our feeble, misguided intercessions and makes them acceptable before a holy God. Giving up a hope of being heard, we often do. The sight of Jesus is his heavenly intercession that gives us strength to pray in his name. And so again, we are able to intercede because Christ intercedes for us and uh, takes even what we have to offer and makes it better. Uh, but we do also pray in Jesus' name. Uh, and Foster takes a moment to, to, to look at that. A prayer in the name of Jesus. Um, how is it that we have this, uh, that, we, that we do this? And simply it's because in scripture we are asked to pray in the name of Jesus. In fact, we are assured that if we pray through the name of Jesus, uh, uh, miraculous things can happen. Uh, we will be blessed in so many ways. And so we do as we have been asked and instructed. But Foster asked if we know what it really means to pray in the name of Jesus. And he says that there's probably at least two things <laughs> that that means. Uh, first of all, he offers uh, the inside of Donald Blosh who writes, to pray in the name of Christ means to pray in the awareness that our prayers have no worthiness or efficacy apart from his atoning sacrifice and redemptive mediation. It means to appeal to the blood of Christ at the source of power for the life of prayer. It means to acknowledge our complete helplessness apart from his mediation and intercession. To pray in his name means that we recognize that our prayers cannot penetrate the tribunal of God unless they are presented to the Father by the Son, our one Savior and Redeemer. And so that is the uh, objective, if you will, he says, of this, the objective side of praying in Jesus' name. But there's also a subjective side, an experiential side. And he says that is uh, that we do indeed um, seek to pray in accord with Jesus, uh, understanding Jesus' way and Jesus' nature, that we would actually lift up the kinds of prayers Jesus would lift up if Jesus were present in our midst here today. Um, if we are self-seeking in our prayers, um, then when we say, I pray in the name of Jesus, that it's just, um, just words. It really has no connection. We need to have that relationship with Christ, uh, start to understand Christ. How, how is it that we can understand what Christ might want to pray for someone? It's because we build a relationship with him. It is because we uh, connect with our God. It is because we allow the Holy Spirit to move within us and we connect uh, the Holy Spirit, allows the Holy Spirit to nurture and, um, what do I want to say? Nurture and um, help develop our spirit so that we have that connection, right? It's like uh, someone who's a, a couple who's been together for a long time and they start to know what the other is thinking or finishing each other's sentences. As we continue to build our relationship with Christ, we too will know what Christ is thinking. We will know what is on Christ's heart because we have become close to Christ. We are reminded of uh, John 15 when uh, we are told to abide in Christ. <clears throat> and I wanted to share again from uh, Foster's book. If you abide in me and my words abide and you ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. That's from John 15, 7. This abide in me is the all-inclusive condition for effective intercession. It is the key for the prayer in the name of Jesus. We learn to become like the branch which receive its, receives its life from the vine. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. John 15, 4. Nothing is more important to a life of prayer than learning how to become a branch, to allow God and Christ and the Holy Spirit to feed us in our prayer life. That is how we are able to be fruitful in our prayer life is through that connection. 
So how do we know? Again, uh, what Jesus would ask, again, it comes down to that relationship, building of relationship. Of course, one of the things I think about uh, intercessory prayer is that it can be discouraging sometimes um, because we can ask for things for others, um, ask for healing, ask for a change in situation, a change in heart, and not see any results on our end. <laughs> but um, we have to remember that we are not the ones in charge. Uh, we can't truly know someone else's heart, and we don't know how God is uh, doing the work that we might have asked for. Our timing is not God's timing. Our ways are not God's ways. And so we are encouraged to be persistent in our prayers, especially prayers of intercession. In fact, Christ does a whole series of parables uh, with the idea of teaching us to pray always and to not lose heart. So how is it we go about these prayers of intercession? Um, there are many ways. Um, we all do it a little differently. Some people make lists of names uh, with ideas next to them. I do some of that and come back to those lists periodically. Um, and go back and check lists uh, that I've made. The nice thing about making a list is that then you can go back and you can see, okay, I prayed for this, uh, for this person here. And then when that prayer is answered, you can go back and you can actually have record of answered prayers. And that can be very encouraging. We can start keeping those kinds of records. Uh, Foster mentioned someone who had photographs of someone. And I thought that was really cool to have that imagery before you of the person uh, you are actually praying for. Another recommendation was you might start with your enemies <laughs> first um, and, and those furthest from you and then come uh, to those who are closest to you. Uh, one thing that has been taught for years to disciples of Christ is the five finger prayer. And that is a very simple way of prayer of intercession. You start with your thumb and you pray for those who are closest to you. So your family, your friends, uh, children, uh, parents, those kinds of things. So you can pray for those. Then you move to your uh, pointer finger and you pray for those who guide you, who direct you, who point you towards God, who direct you in your life. So those mentors, teachers, um, uh, ministers, those kinds of people. Uh, parents uh, can be those who are, are guiding you and pointing you um, in the right direction. Uh, then you go to your uh, tallest finger and so then you pray for the leaders in um, your community, in the world, uh, those who are leaders uh, that you're aware of and uh, lift them up. Then the ring finger is actually your weakest finger. And so you can pray for those who are weak, uh, who are struggling, who um, need help. It might be physical weakness, it might be mental weakness, it might be emotional weakness, spiritual weakness, whatever those weaknesses might be. And then the pinky uh, for the smallest among us or also for those who are furthest from us or maybe who are marginalized. Uh, so you can use that and that can be a very simple way of doing prayers of intercession is a five finger prayer. And that can kind of help get you started if it's not something you've really uh, delved into before. And then Foster shares uh, how he does prayers of intercession and I want to share that with you as well says, here is my approach. After prayer for my immediate family, I wait quietly until individuals or situations spontaneously rise to my awareness. This is allowing the Holy Spirit to move within you. I then offer these to God, listening to see if any special discernment comes to guide the content of the prayer. Next, I speak forth what seems most appropriate in full confidence that God hears and answers. After spoken intercession, I may remain for a while, inviting the Spirit to pray through me with sights too deep for sighs too deep for words. I will stay with any given individual or situation until I feel released from the prayer concern. Throughout the time, I may jot down brief notes in a small prayer journal as I sense the Spirit giving instruction. These notes are often extremely helpful for over time, a pattern sometimes emerges that holds the key to the person's need. This then informs the direction of future intercessions. And so I think so often um, we consider intercessory prayer as something we're bringing to God that God doesn't know anything about. 
<laughs> that we need to tell God what needs to happen for others. Same thing with our petitionary prayers. And we forget that this is a conversation. Um, just as a child often comes to a parent uh, trying to explain to them things that they think uh, need to happen in a relationship, the parent is quite often already aware of these. But having that dialogue is what deepens the relationship. And remember, prayer is all about our relationship with our God. And so, um, again, praying for others is a way that we not only help others, but deepen our relationship with the one who does the interceding for them and can truly help them. Of course, none of us can pray for everyone or every concern out there. Uh, we can start to feel overwhelmed if we feel like we have to do that. Um, if, we, if our list starts getting too long, sometimes we know if we sit with that, uh, Lord, the Lord will take something off of our plate, take someone off of our plate. This is not your, this is not your assignment. It might be someone else's assignment. And so we are allowed to let go of those. I know that one of the practices that I do uh, and have done with the church is when there is a lengthy list of names, I will lay my hands upon that list and simply pray that um, these names which my hands touch, Lord, may these lives by your hand be touched knowing that God knows their needs uh, deeper than I, but I am still in uh, agreement with God and praying uh, through the nature of Christ that these folks will find um, the assistance of God and recognize that in their lives. Of course, then there's the other uh, side of the coin where um, we just never get around <laughs> to those prayers of intercession. And I've been there in my life too. Uh, it's like, oh, I told them I would pray for them. Did I ever actually do that? Ugh. you know, and you start thinking, hmm, I feel really bad about that. Have you ever had someone say, oh, thank you so much for the prayers? And you think, oh, was I, was I praying for you? I'm so sorry. I never really did that. Uh, we never say that out loud, of course, but we, we start feeling bad. And so making those lists can help us uh, keep track of those folks that we've agreed to pray for. Uh, but also, if, if we're finding that that's more often the case, then it comes back to that deepening that relationship. We need to be in more prayer, uh, whether it's intercessory or not, uh, so that we are making that deeper connection with God, asking God to open our hearts that we might love as God loves. For as we are loving others more, we will have a desire to bring them before the Lord. And so we're going to take time now to pray together. We are up to five minutes in prayer together. Take this time to pray those prayers of intercession for folks that you know. You might try the five-finger prayer. You might have a list of your own that you want to use at this time. But we will take our five minutes uh, as, our, as our habit started by uh, three bells and ended by three bells. And we will uh, close with... Um, Again, going back to Foster's book. May God bless you in this time of prayer.
at the end of his chapter, Foster says, by means of the intercessory prayer, God extends to each of us a personalized, hand-engraved invitation to become intimately involved in laboring for the well-being of others. In the following chapters, we will turn our attention to several specific forms of intercession. It is my hope, Foster says, that each one will play a part in helping us accept this divine invitation to freely give even as we have freely received. And so I hope you, like I, look forward to these final chapters, but I will also remind you that we are nearing the end of this book, and I would really appreciate it if you would make comments here or reach out to me through a Messenger uh, to tell me if you would like to see these Friday morning sessions continue, uh, what you would like or what you have liked best about them. Uh, is it uh, the learning about the prayer? Is it having the five minutes or, or so of prayer? Is it the music that I play during the prayer time? Is it um, just learning more, uh, taking that time to deepen and connect with others who are uh, seeking to deepen their prayer life? Whatever it is, I'd like, like to hear responses from you. If you would like to see this move forward, I may have to open it in a new group I was not able to post the prayer calendar for this month because Facebook won't let me. Uh, they won't let me do anything but the live right now uh, in this group. Others of you can post. Maybe I should send it to Betty Chamberlain and she can post it for me. I don't know, but it's interesting that others can post in the group, but I cannot. So I might have to close this group and open a new one. Uh, I will wait till uh, for sure the end of this book to do that. But I would like to know if you would like to see these continue on Friday mornings and what that might look like what you would like us for us to continue to have in those sessions. So I look forward to hearing from you. Let us close our time this morning with Foster's prayer as he closes this chapter. Let us pray together. Gracious Holy Spirit, so much of my life seems to revolve around my interests and my welfare. I would like to live just one day in which everything I did benefited someone besides me. Perhaps prayer for others is a starting point. Help me to do so without any need for praise or reward. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope and pray that uh, this session is an encouragement to you as you seek to pray for others. And we will, as Foster says, go into uh, deeper detail on different kinds of intercessory prayer in the weeks ahead. Thank you again so much for being a part of this morning, uh, this prayer time. Uh, may God bless you and keep you in the week to come. I'll look forward to us praying together next week. <music>